Welcome, one and all, to this exciting occasion. We are here to uh, hear the talk of a prominent up-and-coming assistant professor in the field of Haitian studies. C'est Lucien Joseph, sitting here to my left, is gracing us with his presence today. He has uh, been on the radar for a very long time in Haitian studies. Uh, and has made some significant contributions. Some of them I would like to touch on here, but uh, as briefly as possible so that we can leave the floor to our honored guest. So he earned his PhD at the University of Texas in Dallas and is currently working as an assistant professor of English at Indian River State College, which is in Fort Pierce, Florida, and actually serves 30, over 30,000 students. He is the author of the book entitled From Toussaint to Prismas, Rhetoric, Race, and Religion in Haitian Thought, which was published in 2013. He is also the author of Haitian Modernity and Liberative Interruptions, Discourse on Race, Religion, and Freedom, also from 2013. So, it's quite remarkable that an academic releases two books in a single year. He's also the author this year of God Loves Haiti. And he is serving currently as the general editor of the forthcoming Vodou Anthology, entitled Vodou in Haitian Memory, the Idea and Representation of Vodou in Haitian Imagination, Volume 1, and Vodou in the Haitian Experience, a Black Atlantic Perspective, the second volume, which will be published by Lexi Lexington Books very soon, in December or January. So, uh, would you welcome with me Dr. Joseph today? Thank you, Ben, for this great um, introduction. And I would like to thank the Center for Latin American Studies for sponsoring this. That. I have entitled my talk, What Are They Saying About Voodoo, the Christian Voodooist Tradition or Dialogue? In this presentation, I examine the work of two prominent progressive Haitian theologians, Léonard Hubon, a Catholic theologian and former priest, and Jean Fizemé, a Protestant theologian and former pastor and their interaction with the Vodou religion. Both thinkers have written prolifically about the three major religious expressions in Haiti and the enduring religion conflict between Protestantism, Catholicism, and Vodou in the Caribbean nation. The history of relations between these religions and Haiti is marked by a high degree of combativeness, hostility, and discomfort. To resolve the religious tension between Haitian Voodoo and Haitian Christianity, Ubon has suggested a frank ecumenical dialogue between the two traditions and carefully demo demonstrated the vi viability of Voodoo in the Haitian experience and life. In the same line of thought, Fizemi has recommended an interreligious dialogue between the two religious traditions and brilliantly argues for the enculturation of the for the faith in Haitian Protestantism and culture. I have outlined my talk as follows. First, we will explore the emergence of the Catholic Christian tradition in Haiti. Secondly, the birth of the Pro of Protestant Christian tradition. And third, I will bring Ubon and Fizeme uh, into conversation with those two traditions. Then finally, I will explore the shortcomings and Fizeme and Ubon's argument. The, the Haitian experience in religion is full of complexity and ambivalence. The three major religions practiced in Haiti are Roman Catholicism, Protestantism, and Voodoo. Recent studies have indicated that among 60% to 70% of, of people who have claimed Catholicism 
as their faith. 80% of them are active voodooists, and as we say, Haitian voodooism. But Haitians are also Muslims, Buddhists, even in the minority. Equally, there has been Haitians who profess theism, agnosticism, theistic humanism, non-theistic humanism, even atheism, as the great contemporary Haitian novelist and public intellectual Lionel Toulou. The religious experience of the Haitian people is not monolithic. Briefly, we define religion as that which provides orientation or direction to human life. Religion formulates a sense of meaning, meaning in the human experience. Through the ritual structures and symbolic sources provided in various religions, humans give their thought and actions meaning. Therefore, religion at its core is a process of meaning making. And of course, there are various factors that determine the religious life and foster the, religi the religious ideas of a people. This might include internal factors, such as spiritual depression, skepticism, fear, um, struggle against sin, evil, human suffering. External forces might include certain historical events, such as the birth of a child, the, de the death of an important member, family member, and separ family separation in the case of divorce, war, racism, no life experiences. We should remember that the role of religion in, in society is not static. As society changes and people face new experiences, new challenges, religions evolve with the society. And the religious experience of a people also modify and acquire no meaning. The first enslaved Africans who were shipped to the island of Hispaniola in 1510 and the period thereafter, during the colonial moments of the Spaniards, the French and the English brought with them religious traditions, values, unwritten literature, systems of worship, and the particularized African attitude towards nature and the supernatural. The Catholic Christian tradition. The Catholic tradition in Sendomen, Haiti, began with the missionary activities of Catholic priests who were commissioned to Christianize and civilize the enslaved African population and the French colony. Colonial missionary Christianity in the island was a failure, resulting in a few African converts to the Christian faith. Religious scholar and anthropologist Rémi Bastien has suggested two chief reasons leading to the unsex and unsuccessful mission of Christianity in Haiti. So Christianity's inability to provide the African with a satisfactory religious life and the resistance of the African to his lot and his will to preserve as much of his cultural possible. On the other hand, the Christian tradition in Haiti is also linked to Afrophobia and Voodooophobia. Colonial administrators outlawed voodoo immediately in the mid 1600s. Gérard Magloire Danton explained that since the period of slavery in Haiti to the middle of the 20th century, voodoo remained synonymous with barbarism and was associated with bloody ritualistic practices and cannibalism in the Euro-American narrative and scientific discourse. Most Catholic priests who served as missionaries in the island of Saint-Domingue equated voodoo with an African beliefs with sorcery, paganism, superstition, even Satanism. In other words, voodoo was not considered a religion. For example, Father Jean-Baptiste Labbaye, 17th century missionary, who reported with great details about the religious life of the Africans in his book, Voyage aux Îles de l'Amérique, equates voodoo with sorcery and magic. As he asserts, before baptizing the adults, it is necessary 
to mark out those who filled the role of sorcerer in their country. For whatever promises they made, they will rarely abandon them. Correspondingly, the great colonial historian, Moro de saint rami in description topographic, described Vodou ceremony, <coughs> ritual that as a kind of bacchanalia, a disgusting prostitution. So the goal of the colonial church was to manage slavery and not to abolish it. Church workers in historical journals show that the church did not oppose slavery and hate. Some in the church even justified it on the basis that he gave the slaves the opportunity to become Christian. So the best indication of church acceptance of slavery is that priests owned slaves. Evidently, the photophobic discourse was developed in colonial time as a way to justify the institution of slavery and the, the desire to civilize the African to Western worldview and lifestyle. In the 20th century, photophobia continues to be an intellectual narrative with the event of, the, of American evangelism evangelicalism in Haiti during the American occupation from 1914 to from 1915 to 1934. In fact, the post-occupation era has brought more zealous American missionaries in the country with the view to eradicate voodoo and save Haiti for Christ. In addition, the number of American evangelical missionaries escalated following the earthquake of January 2010 that had devastated the country. Given the evangelical narrative that the earthquake was a punishment by God. But for those still remains a very present reality in the Haitian society. Similarly, both expression of Christianity, Protestantism and Catholicism continue to be a crucial element in the Haitian experience with religion. Unfortunately, there have been many misunderstandings and conflicts between those two religious traditions. These conflicts have created a lot of suffering among the Haitian people and harmed the country. Catholicism, for example, has been recognized as the state religion by a number of constitutions of the country such as the constitutions of 1801, 1806, 1816. In March 28, 1860, the Haitian government, Fab Nicolas Giffroy, signed a concordat with Rome that made, that made Catholicism the official religion of the Haitian state. One of the major goals of the church, which was also the goal of the state, was to eradicate Vodou from the Haitian soil. Vodou was considered superstition, idolatry, and the main obstacle to Haitian, to Haiti's entrance to, mod to modernization or to modernity. It is in the social and historical context that several, several major campaigns were organized jointly by the church and the state to exterminate Vodou and Vodouism. Over five anti voodoo campaigns have therefore been organized in 1864, 1896, 1912, 1925 to 1930, 1940, 1950, 41. During these campaigns, voodoo temples were searched and seized, the and religious objects were destroyed. The Protestant Christian tradition. The first Protestant missionaries came to Haiti during the presidencies of Henri Christophe and Alexandre Pétion. These missionaries came from the United States and England, and the Haitian people only welcomed them to their native land. The Quaker missionaries, Etienne de Grille and John Hancock, first landed in Lecaille in 1816. The English missionaries, John Brown and James Scott, Haiti's first Protestant historian, 
also arrived about the same year. Brown and Catt established the first Protestant church in Port au Prince in 1817. The city of Carpathian, where I'm from, received two new Methodist missionaries, Harvey and Johns. King Henri Christophe cordially welcomed them. But the American Baptist sent Thomas Paul, a black minister from Massachusetts, to Carpathian in 1823. Welcomed by President Boyer, he established some congregations before departing six months later. With time, the Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostals, Seventh-day Adventists, Episcopalians, and others have established deep roots in Haiti. They settled, spread out, undergone many schisms, and produced numerous denominations. In addition, the African-American Episcopal Church, Minister Joseph Theodore Harley, who immigrated in, in Haiti in the 1860s, was instrumental in, spread, in spreading Protestant Christianity in the Caribbean nation. Reverend Harley became the first Episcopal Bishop in Haiti in 1874 and established the Orthodox Apostolic Church, the country's first national church, and also the first church founded under Anglican auspices outside English-speaking country. 